thought for the day, brothers and sisters, today I was reading in the book of 1 John chapter 5, where in the last verse we read in verse 21, John tells his little children, spiritually speaking, keep yourselves from idols. My brothers and sisters, an idol is anything, any place, anyone you put before God. The Bible has much to say about idolatry. First and foremost, there was a Christian theologian in the 16th century by the name of John Calvin. He was born in 1509. He died in 1564. And he had a saying that still resonates in my mind. He says that the heart of man by nature is an idol factory. The fruits of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21 list all the things that we are by nature apart from God and Jesus Christ. And one of them things that we are in our hearts is idolatry. We're idolaters by nature. In Exodus chapter 20, we all know the Ten Commandments. God tells us Ten Commandments to live by. And in the beginning of that chapter, God tells the people of Israel that he had freed them from Egypt, from the bondage of Egypt. And the first thing he tells them to do in verses 3 to 6, basically, is to keep themselves from idols. Idolatry in our lives, my brothers and sisters, will cause us much heartache and pain. I've seen it in my own life. But first and foremost, the Bible tells us in Psalm 16, verse 4, if you want to multiply troubles in your life and sorrows, become an idolater. Idolize the things of this world. One man who learned this the hard way was a man by the name of Jonah. Jonah was told to preach repentance to the people of Nineveh in his day by God. Instead, he got on a ship and tried to go the other way. And in chapter 2, we know the story. He's taken in by a great fish, and he's in the belly of the fish. And in Jonah chapter 2, verse 8, Jonah says, Anyone who becomes an idolater or follows idols forsakes the only one who could give you steadfast love, and that is God. I've seen it in my own life. When I've put the affections of a woman trying to find the uh, pleasure in a lady, uh, things of the street life, whether it's drugs or alcohol, the bars, only to find out that these things only cause more sorrow in our lives. But we can also idolize things in our minds that could be detrimental. Again, any thought we have in our mind before we put it on God is an idol. How many of us are guilty of idolizing pride, envy, guilt, unnecessary guilt, worry, anxiety? Anytime we put these things in our minds and it, and it captivates our minds, that could actually become an idol. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, the Bible tells us, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. That's why we are told that we are to seek first the kingdom of God, my brothers and sisters. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Put God first in your life, and you'll avoid idols in your life. That is why we are told in the Bible to flee from idolatry. Idols are something that we all place in our lives. We're all guilty of it. But we have to put God first in our lives. Today, I find the religion or the idolatry of this culture in America is politics. It saddens my heart how I just recently heard from a Christian pastor how 93% of Americans get their news from liberal news outlets. In the 20th century, there was couple of philosophers by the name of Saul Alinsky and Joseph Goebbels. And basically when the dawn of TV was coming out in the 1930s, 1940s, they had a saying, tell a story over and over again on TV and you could brainwash low-informed, ignorant people. Tell, us, tell a lie long enough, they would say, and people would start to believe it. Sadly today, a lot of politicians that we have in our offices are disciples of these two men. They follow their teachings. This is why in the public school system, idolatry is in the heart of so many children because they're indoctrinated with the things of this world, the philosophies of this world. My friends, we should not be getting our news from the world. You wanna get your news, get it from the Bible. The good news, the gospel, 
found in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The way we do this, brothers and sisters, by meditating on the Word of God. In Joshua chapter 1, after Moses had died, God told Joshua to lead the people, a great number of people. Joshua was scared. He was terrified, worried, anxiety must have pressed into his heart and his mind. He was only human like us. But Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, God tells us in a, 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 a precious promise. He told Joshua, be bold and courageous. Meditate on the word of God day and night. My friends today, can I encourage you to start your day in the word? Start your day in prayer. You often hear me tell you that Jesus Christ started his day, Mark chapter 1, verse 35, on a mountain early in the morning, praying to his Father. Let us not worry about the news going on in the world, because if we press on too much with the things of this world, as I said before, by nature, our hearts are idol factories. We'll start to idolize people, not realizing that they could captivate our hearts and our minds. This is why there's so much division in our, in our, country, in our country today. One of the most famous scripture verses that everybody loves to quote, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That is true. First John 4, 8, God is love. Everybody likes to hear about the love of God. I get it. God is love. However, it doesn't stop there. Exodus chapter 34, verse 14 tells us that God is a jealous God. It says his name is jealous. We don't like to hear that, but it's what the Bible says. God is jealous, not in a sense like a jealous husband or a jealous wife is. God is jealous in the sense that he will not share his glory with no one else. When we make idols in our lives, we're glorying in that person, that thing. America is an idol factory. Go to a mall prior to coronavirus. And even now the malls are starting to get packed again. Go to a baseball game. You know, yes, they've been people haven't been able to go to sports events but eventually as time goes on and this coronavirus subsides you're going to see 50 60 thousand people again in stadiums worshiping people on a ball field my friends exodus 34 verse 14 i encourage you to look at it god is a jealous god his name is jealous he is not going to share his glory with another you're either glorying in or worshiping the things of this world idols or you're going to worship God, and that is only through Jesus Christ and Him alone. Take care this day. Put God first in your life. God bless.